Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was created by Mark, who's an intermediate photographer from California. Metadata Canon 5D Mark II, effective focal length of 17 millimeters. The exposure trio information that we do have is f4, 239 seconds. Very long exposure here, basically four minutes long. In his backstory, Mark says that this image was created at Sunset Cliffs, San Diego, California, and he says his favorite subject is the coast. Right away, one of the things I enjoy about Mark's image is the square crop. So this has obviously been cropped from the original 35 millimeter aspect ratio, and I really love the square crop here. So with the exception of the anchoring rock, which I'll talk about in a minute, so much of this composition is formally symmetrical. It's almost a 50-50 split in between water, coast, and then the sky. It's also a really strong sense of a classic formally symmetrical design, which is the spokes on the wheel. All of these implied lines and their movement are all sort of converging to the true center of the image. And that design, which is symmetrical, I think works beautifully inside of the square. Another thing I really like with the stability of the square composition and a lot of the formal symmetries. It's not just this implied movement of line. There are a lot of implied shapes where if we're reflecting on either the x-axis, this area over to here, or this over to here, definitely down here, almost perfectly formally symmetrical. It's also happening on the y-axis when you look at the implied shape here and here. In addition to all of that, Mark has this really beautiful base for the image and this negative space where the rocks go to pure black down in here I think really helps to stabilize the whole composition. I think it's really nice considering that you have the heavy mass of the rock sitting here in an area that is very ethereal. I really like the way this down here pushes back against this movement and also sort of is cradling the rock. Another thing I like about the idea of the square here is the rock itself, particularly if we look at the base of the rock, this corner really starts to, for me again, suggest something that's stable and is going along with a lot of the implied shapes, but also again just the concept of the stability of formal symmetry. Another thing that I love about Mark's image is the richness of the black and white conversion. I talk about this a lot. The power of an area or areas of pure black. Just love the way the black transition is broken up here into almost pure white. And then areas that are gray, there's really beautiful local contrast, particularly here on the rock. And to me, in addition to this corner, something else this rock that has happening that I think is very powerful and adds a lot to the image. It's not just any ordinary rock. Because of the local contrast here, the beautiful tones here, you get a real strong sense of the surface quality of the rock and the texture here and here starts to make me think of other things besides rock. I start to think of the archetype of a face, other things, almost can see the sphinx here in this rock. It starts to add another layer of story to the composition and I think that's really powerful. It's really encourage you to be inspired by Mark's image if you've not ever gone out and put your camera on the tripod and affected very long exposures to give it a try if you like to shoot landscapes. This kind of long exposure where you have some kind of mo motion, either something obvious like surf action, could be something that's more subtle, could just be a field of grasses and the wind is blowing. If you can get yourself to 30 seconds, a minute or longer, you can really start to have a lot of fun with the difference between still and implied motion. To me, a still photograph um, has one of the most powerful abilities in all of art to imply this idea of motion. Shooting just like this on the tripod, big and wide, some things are static and calm, other things are moving. Clearly, you could go out at night or in very low light and affect these type of exposures. If you want to try this during the day on overcast days or days where there's not as much light, you're going to need neutral density. And in my opinion, you're going to need a minimum of about 10 stops of neutral density. It's a really stunning landscape image from Mark. I want to say a big thank you to him for sharing it with us. And would love to encourage you to submit your favorite images for Photo of the Week. We get a lot of submissions for the Daily Critique, not as many for Photo of the Week. We're always looking for powerful, beautiful images to talk about in the context of design on Friday's Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. Thanks again to Mark. Thank you so much for being here and being a part of the Mindful Eye community. Hope you have a great weekend.